so the homework questions. Um, write down all possible arrangements of the letters G I M E S that begin with a vowel and end with a vowel, for example, and it gives you an example there. Now, I'm not going to write them all down, but just to tell you how many that you should get. So if they begin and end with a vowel, so how many vowels are there? Well, there's only two vowels. So you could put A or E there. So you have two choices for the first one. And let's just say you put the A there, then you've only one choice for the last one. So then that would leave you three, two, one here. So you'd have a choice of three, and then if you used M, for example, you would only have G and S left. Let's just say you use G. So then you've only one left there. So two by three by two by one. So you should have got 12 when you wrote them all out. Number two, how many have M in the middle? So when you've written those down, um, so you can just count them. So if I put M in the middle, I only have one choice for the middle. And then I could put four, three, two, one. So that should be, oh, sorry, it's the vowels then. Sorry, I beg your pardon, that's wrong. It must start and end with a vowel. So if it starts and, end with a, if it starts and ends with a vowel, then M is in the middle. I have two vowels that I could put there. So that means I've only got one then. And then I have only two more letters left. So two by two, by one by one by one. So that's four of the arrangements have M in the middle. How many arrangements end with E? So if it ends with E, now I'm assuming that this is the arrangements that begin and end with a vowel. So I'm just gonna check the solutions at the back just to make sure that I'm, I'm doing it the correct way. Um, so 11.33. Yeah, so how many of them begin and end with, or how many of them end with an E? So fill in your restrictions first would be the common way of doing this. So if they end with an E, you've only one choice there. And that means that the A must go here because it must begin and end with a vowel. So then you've got only got three, two, one, so you've got six. Number four, in how many does G appear before S? So in how many of these arrangements does G appear before S? Now you've got them counted out, so that's great. Um, so you can just count them, the number of arrangements. But if I did it this way, um, then, so if it must start and end with a vowel, so you've got two choices for a vowel at the start, one, one at the end. Um, now, and then how many does G appear before S? So you just basically treat G and S as one letter, and it would have to be arranged like this. The G would have to come before the S. So you treat them as one, one block. So we'll just join these two together, and just that's the G and the S. But the G and the S could go there, or it could go there, so it's two and one, so that would give you four choices. Number five, and how many does S appear before G? So it's actually just on the same way, and you should get the same answer, so two by two by one by one. Now those are kind of difficult ones, but as I say, you've it written out, so it's not too bad. And then in how many are M and G not side by side? So there are four in which they're side by side. Um, or sorry, how many, yeah, or, or, part six, and how many are M and G side by side? So again, you just treat uh, M and G as one letter. And they're side by side, so it could be M and G or G and M. So just count them up. And uh, so two then, so let's just see if I... Hopefully you'll get the same answer as this. So begins and ends with a vowel, and then M and G are side by side. Just treat that into one, so it's two. Uh, so two by one. And then this can be arranged in two ways. So hopefully you got it, but you can check that with them written out. Now the next question then is um, on the next page, and it's question 12. In how many ways can the letters of the word modal be arranged? So you've got M-O-D-A-L. 
so that's nice and straightforward. It's just five factorial, five by four by three by two by one. So that's 120 different ways. The second one, how many of these arrangements begin with an L? So in these types of questions, then uh, fill in your restrictions first. There's only one L, so you don't have a choice. It must go first. So then you would have four letters remaining, then three, then two, then one. So 24 of them begin with an L. How many do not begin with an L? Well, think of it like this, right? There are 20, there are 120 in total. 24 of them begin with an L. So therefore, 96 don't begin with an L. How many end with M? So fill in the restrictions first. So there's only one, sorry, how many end with an M? There's only one M, so the M must go here. So if you use the M, then you've only got a choice of four for here, three for here, two for here, and one for there. So that would also be 24. The next question then is question 14. Karen had to study seven subjects for her Christmas exams, maths, French, Irish, CSPE, English, history, and geography. She decides to study four of these subjects in a particular day. Find the number of ways that she can study her four subjects if there are no restrictions. So she's gonna study four subjects in any given day. And she has seven subjects to choose from. So seven by six by five by four. Let's just say she picks maths first. Then she would only have six subjects left to choose from, then five, then four. The reason that we don't go the whole way three by two by one is because she's only going to study four. So seven by six by five by four, so 42, 210, 840, I think. Uh, yeah, 840. So that's part one. Part two, if she must start with maths, smart decision. So if she must start with maths, then she's only one choice. And then she'll only have six subjects remaining. So six by five by four by three, that'll be 120. Number three then, if she must not start with maths, then she only has six subjects there to choose from at the start. But then maths comes back into the, into the equation then, pardon the pun. Um, so if she, must, if she must not start with maths, she must start with one of the other six. But then maths comes back into, into the reckoning then. So she has six to choose from, then five, then four. So 20... Um, 120, 120 by 6 is 720, I think. Just double check that. Yep, so 720. Number four, if she must start with a language. So she must start with a language. So the languages are French, Irish, English. So there are three languages there to study from. So if she must start with a language, she has three to choose from. Then she has six left to pick from, then five, then four. So uh, 18, so five by four is 20, 120, 360. And the last part, if she must not start with a language. So if she must not start with a language, then she's only got four to choose from in the first subject slot, but then she'll have six, then five, then four, 24, 120, 480 different ways that she could do that. Number 17, how many three digit numbers can be made from the digits five, six, seven, or sorry, five, seven, eight, nine. So we have question 14, five, seven, eight, nine. So how many four, sorry, how many three digit numbers can be made from the, these digits? No digit may be repeated. If there are no restrictions, so if there's no restrictions, then any one of those four numbers could come first. But let's just say five comes first, then you've only three numbers remaining, one, two, three. So then two by one, so 24. Four factorial is 24. Number two, if the number is even. Now, so if the number is even, and this is a, a strategy where you, got, you can actually just write out the the numbers, write out all the numbers, but that's 24 numbers that you'd have to write out, and that takes time. Now, if it's even, it must end with eight, because eight is the only even number, so you've only one choice from that. So then you could pick any one of the remaining three to go first, then two, then one. So only six of them are even. Number three, if the number is odd, well, if there are 24 numbers in total, and there are six that are even, then there are 18 that are odd. If the number is over 700, 
Now, if the number's over 700, this is actually another one where you could actually just write out the, you know, list the number 700 and, sorry, 7,000. Um, yeah, and I'm actually, after recognising I've done this question entirely wrong because it's three-digit numbers, okay? Three-digit numbers. So uh, just ignore that. Okay, so I have to start question 14 again. So how many three-digit numbers can be made? Now, always read the question accurately. You're fed up hearing people tell you that. So a three-digit number, you could pick any one of the four to go first, and then three, and then two. So four by three by two, so it's 24. Number two, um, if the number is even. So if the number is even, it must end with an eight. There's only one eight. So then you could pick any one of the remaining three, and then two. So there are six numbers that are even, so the answers aren't really changing here, but that's just a fluke. So then if the number is odd, um, well, there are six even, so therefore there's 18 odd. And if the number is over 700, so again, you could probably just list out the numbers that are over 700, but if they're over 700, they must start with either seven, eight, or nine. So you have three choices at which to start from. Then you could use any of the other three, and then two, so three by three is nine, and then two is 18. And the last question, um, and how many ways can letters of the word triangle be arranged if there are no restrictions? So this is, uh, sorry, question 18. So no restrictions. So triangle is T-R-I-A-N-G-L-E. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's an eight letter word. So the first part is just 8 factorial, 8 by 7 by 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1, which is 40,320. So you'd be a while writing out all those possible ways to rearrange the letters of the word triangle. If the arrangements must begin with an N. So it's an 8-letter word. So there's only one N. So then there's only one to choose from. And then 6, 5, 4, 3. Three, two, one. So this will be just seven factorial, which is five thousand and forty. <clears throat> if they must begin with a vowel, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many vowels are there? One, two, three. There are three vowels, so any one of the three could go there then that would leave you seven letters to choose from, then six, five, four, three, two, one. So that should be 15,120. So 15,120, and the last part, if the three vowels must come at the start. Now, so the three vowels must come at the start here. So. What we're going to do, they must come at the start, so we'll just treat them as one letter. So if we get rid of the three vowels here, that would leave us with one, two, three, four, five. Five more letters to choose from. Now, but the three vowels can be arranged in any order. It can be A, I, E, E, I, A, E, A, I, whatever. So they can be arranged in three factorial ways. And then you can pick five, four, three, two, one. So that will be six by. So that will be seven hundred and twenty.